Okay, in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at solving equations involving fractional exponents. Um, and this is a handout uh, that you can or should have picked up in class. But let me zoom in here and we'll go over it. So this standard 7H um, is solving equations involving fractional exponents. So right here, let's just take a review, um, a quick review here um, and look at a couple of concepts. First of all, here this A to the M to the N, this is just uh, an expression that shows... Um, a, a base with a power raised to a power, okay? Well, when we have power to a power, we multiply those powers. We multiply those exponents. So, taking a look at this example, when you have a variable such as x with an exponent of a fraction of one-third, if we were to raise that to the power of three, then we have this power to a power. Well, one-third times three, or three over one, that's going to be three-thirds, which is one. So this, x to the one-third to the third, is equal to x. Another example, of course, if you have x to the three, or x cubed, and then you raise that to one-third, that also equals x. Because when you multiply this three times one-third, again, it's three over three. And what we're demonstrating here is what happens when we use reciprocal powers. So one third and three over one are reciprocal powers. and we multiply them, we get one, okay? So we're gonna use this concept when we solve our equations today. So just looking at the first example, and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here so we can take a closer look. When we have x to the third or x cubed equals 64, of course, what this is saying is some number cubed is equal to 64, and, and some of you may be comfortable with that and actually can do that in your head. But if we solve it right here, x to the third, and if we raise that to the one-third, well, we would do that because that equals x. But if we raise the left side to one-third, we have to raise the right side to one-third. And 64 to the one-third is also the cube root of 64, but if you plug 64 to the one-third in your calculator, you get four. All right, let's take a look at number two. Number two is similar. It says x to the one-third plus 11 equals 16. Well, just like any fraction, um, this x to the one-third also has this plus 11 on the left side. So um, we're going to start by subtracting 11. This should say 11. Uh, it says 10, but it is obviously 11. And we're going to get 5. So now the equation says x to the 1 third equals 5. And again, the strategy for solving an equation with fractional exponents is to raise both sides of the equation to the reciprocal power. So x to the 1 third, we're going to raise to the third power, and the right side, 5 to the third power. On the left side, x to the 1 third to the third, well, that is x equals, and then 5 to the third is 125. So the answer to number 2 is 125. All right, now let's take a look at number 3. This is another problem where we have a variable with an exponent, uh, with a fractional exponent. So 4x to the 6 fifths plus 6 equals 16,390. We will subtract 6 from both sides, and we'll get a new equation. 4x to the 6 fifths equals 16,384. Okay, now this is where some of us might get a little bit confused. The x does have the fractional exponent, but before we address that, this x is being multiplied by 4. So the inverse of multiplying by 4 is to divide by 4, and we do that to both sides of the equation, of course. So now x to the 6 fifths is equal to 4,096. And then this is where, to solve this equation, we're going to raise both sides of the equation to the reciprocal power. So x to the 6 fifth raised to the 5 sixth. Those will basically cancel each other out. And x equals 4,096 to the 5 sixth, which again, plug this into your calculator and you get 1,024. All right, and that's number three. Okay, number four. So here we have x to the uh, x cubed plus four, all divided by 11 equals four. Well, the first thing you have to address in this conversation, I'm sorry, in this equation, is that all of this is being divided by 11. So the inverse, or the way to undo divided by 11, is to multiply by 11. So here you see the left side is being multiplied by 11. 
which the 11s cancel, and you're just left with x cubed plus 4. When we multiply the right side by 11, we get 220. Now, if we're trying to isolate x cubed, uh, we undo this plus 4 by subtracting 4, or we cancel it by subtracting 4 to get 0, and then 220 minus 4 is 216. So now we're asked, uh, we have a number cubed that equals 216, which really it's the cube root of 216. But if you do x to the third and you raise it to the reciprocal power of one third, you get x equals and then 216 to the one third. Or again, the cube root, remember the denominator is the root power. The cube root of 216 is six. Okay, now we need to take a look at a couple of word problems. In this first one, and I'm just going to read through it real quick, kind of show you, just show you how to solve it. Um, it says that the function volume uh, in reference to the surface area is equal to 94 thousandths times the surface area to the three halves. And this can be used to find the approximate volume of a sphere in terms of its surface area. So if you know the surface area, then you can estimate the volume with this formula or this equation. But this says if the volume of the balloon is 1,468 and 75 hundredths cubic centimeters, what is the surface area? So we're actually going to plug in the volume that we know, and we're going to use this equation to determine the S or the surface area. So here I've written that out. The volume of 1,468.75 uh, is equal to 94 thousandths times S to the 3 over 2 or to the 3 halves. All right, and in this equation, the S to the 3 halves is being multiplied by 0 0.094. So we're going to divide by that 0 0.094 on both sides. When you do that, you're left with 15,625 on the left is equal to S or the surface area to the 3 halves. And this 3 halves is fractional exponents why it's part of this lesson. Here, if we're trying to solve for S and it's being raised to 3 halves, we can raise that power to the reciprocal power of 2 over 3. So on the right side, those 3 halves times 2 thirds just gives us 1. So S to the 1 is equal to, and then here, the left side, 15,625 to the 2 thirds. Put that in your calculator and it's 625. So the surface area was 625 square centimeters. All right, now let's take a look at the last one, number six. Okay, this is an equation that we can use um, the amount earned after a certain number of years. So the equation, uh, again, the amount after a number of years is equal to the original principal, or the original investment, times one plus the rate of return times the time or the number of years. And this can be used to calculate compound interest. Um, what approximate interest rate represents Jordan having a return of $1,764.91 on initial investment of only $1,500 after 40 months with no additional deposits or withdrawals. So what this is saying is Jordan made an, an initial investment of $1,500. And without adding any money to that, after 40 months, it had grown to, having earned interest, compounded interest, it had grown to $1,764.91. Well, what this is asking us to determine or to approximate is what was the interest rate that created that growth, okay? Well, we're just going to use the formula. So I'm really giving you this problem to show you how to use this formula that includes a fractional exponent. So here again, we just plug in. This is the amount after a certain number of years. So that's $1,764.91 that was given to us in the problem. And it was equal to P, the principal or the initial investment, which is $1,500, times 1 plus the interest rate, which we don't know. That's the R. And that raised to the T, which is the time. Well, time is always in years. And since this is referencing 40 months, 
we put the 40 divided by the 12 months of the year. So that turns this into a year amount, okay? Well, we're gonna solve this equation like, a, like any equation, okay? We're trying to solve for this R. All of this is being raised to this fractional exponent, but first it's being multiplied by 1,500. So we do that division on both sides of the equation. The 1500s on the right side will cancel out. On the left side, we get 1.17661, which is kind of a rounded number. And it equals um, this parentheses 1 plus the R to the 40 over 12 exponent. Well, now we're going to try to get, again, we're trying to solve for R. So we're going to do the... Um, the 40 over 12, we're going to raise it to the reciprocal power of 12 over 40. We do that because those will basically cancel each other out. But we also have to raise the left side to the power of 12 over 40. Now, when we do that, we're going to get 1.05 is equal to 1 plus r. And then to solve for r, we have to get rid of this 1. So we subtract 1 from both sides. And you'll see that the left side is 0 0.05 or 5 one hundredths is equal to R. Now, R is an interest rate, and that is in a percentage. So 0 0.05 is the same as 5%. So the answer here would be 5% interest. And a lot of times when you're referencing questions that are asking you about an interest rate, it's going to be a rate, a percentage that's going to be less than like 10%. So something like 8% or 5% or 4% of that kind of thing, okay? Well, that's a look at using uh, or solving equations that have fractional exponents.